what's going on everybody <clears throat> all right so we'll see if anybody comes in here real quick and uh, we're gonna try out a new product I got this in the mail got this in the mail a couple days ago and we're gonna try it out everybody knows about uh, you know the stoves and all that you can use for cooking in your truck we're going to try this out right here. The Hot Logic Mini. This is what we're going to try out. What's up, Light Bright? So, what's up, Jonathan, Jason? Yo, Michael Dow? So, we're going to try out this right here, this product. The Hot Logic Mini, right? There's a little, little tag on it. Other, other trucker, James, you might like this uh, thing here. Um, I called these folks up because uh, one of my Walmart truck driving buddies told me about this he said it's better than i'm not going to say the name of these other cookers um but james you'll like this because let me tell you what this can do brother uh you could put your whole pot pie in here box and all and cook it and it's not going to burn the box um it's not going to ruin it you know plastic you put plastic in here and everything right so we'll open this up we'll show you what it, what it looks like See, Michael Dow has it. Says it works pretty good, right? So they give you this booklet. It's got some recipes. You can cook from fresh. You can cook from frozen. It doesn't matter. Um, heats up to about 210 degrees. Here's the plate that's in it. That's your stuff's going to sit on, right? This is the plate right here. Take this little piece out here. So this is what we're going to try. They have two sizes. This is the small size. And then they have a 9 by uh, 13, right? So you can put Pyrex dishes in here and everything. They sell also little uh, containers that are washable, uh, plastic containers. So you could actually prepare the meals at home, put them in the freezer, and uh, bring them to work with you. And then just put them in the, in the, uh, in the mini here and cook it, right? So it can cook off from all these different products, right? Cardboard, plastic, glass, aluminum, doesn't matter. Uh, when my buddy does at Walmart there, old Pappy, he put it. He put in his uh, chicken, rice, some stuff like that, broccoli or whatever he wants to eat in there, even from raw, right? Stick it in there at lunchtime, and he'll plug it in, and it comes with a vehicle plug. Uh, you can order it with a vehicle plug, or you can order it with a uh, off the 110, right off an inverter. Um, see, Shadow Wolf's got two of them. So if you use that code, you get 20% off. I called him up. I got me one of these, and I said, hey, I got a YouTube channel, and I know a lot of guys do a lot of cooking in their trucks. Can you give us a discount code? And uh, so they're giving us 20% off uh, anybody that wants to order these, right? They come in two sizes. So we're going to try it. So we're out there. We'll do some videos of it. We're going to try it, man. All right? That's what we're going to do. And uh, it's got the uh, approval of our Walmart buddy, Pappy. He uses it all the time. He's got the bigger one. He's got the 9 by 13 um, I don't know if he eats a lot, folks, but we're not going to say nothing. Shh. Don't tell Pappy. I hope he's not in here. <laughs> Big Rick Bill, I know you're trying to call, um, my wife had knee replacement, I haven't had time to, to talk on the phone, um, so, this is my first time here in a couple days that, uh, I'm able to do something, so we thought we'd do this quick video next week when I'm on the road, I'll do some cooking videos with this, show everybody how it works, um, so far, all the, all the reports that I read on it, it works great, right? So the best thing about it is if you have, like, say, the Stouffer lasagna in the box, just set the whole box in there, close the lid, plug it in. A couple hours later, you're ready to eat, right? Um, you, you know, you can work with the varying of the cooking times, but we're gonna we're gonna try it, and if we like it, guess what? I'll order the I'll order the big one, right? So uh, after I use a small one here. I'll get online and I'll order the big one. 
uh, for bigger, you know, bigger meals or for full size, large size family TV dinners, right? Um, thanks, Jonathan. We'll appreciate it. So that's what we're going to do. Um, but these little, these little things here, they also sell these little washable containers that you can pre pre do your food before you even leave the house, right? But if you like other Trucker James, you can just stick your uh, TV dinner in there, and here's the best part about it. If you forget about it, because, you know, let's say you put it in there at uh, noon, and you're going to eat at 5, right? Well, at 5 o'clock, you're unloading, but they have you wait inside the building. You're in there for two hours or something. doesn't matter. It won't burn your food, and it won't dry your food out. It'll come out exactly perfect. So we're going to show some cooking demos of that next week. Um, that's what we're going to do with that. So be on the lookout for that stuff, right? And we're going to do it from frozen. We'll do it from TV dinners. Of course, I really don't want to eat TV dinners, but uh, we're going to do that. And then we're going to uh, do it from raw food, right? We're going to put chicken in there. Um, we're going to put frozen chicken breasts in there. We're going to throw some rice down to the bottom, maybe add a little water. Put it all in there in a container, see what it turns out like, right? And we're going to cook hamburger, pork chops, whatever. We're going to put it in there, and we're going to see what happens, right? Because it does 210 degrees. You get your stuff to 165, and, uh, you know, that's what you're supposed to do, right? And if it went in doubt, carry a meat thermometer with you. And uh, poke it in the middle of the meat there and make sure that it's at 165. <clears throat> yes, it can cook raw food, Snorlord, raw meat. Um, like I was saying, it uses any type of dish, plastic, paper, doesn't matter, uh, Pyrex, doesn't matter, right? So you can make all your meals from home. It'll cook from frozen also, Snorlord. So if you put your, you know, take a raw chicken breast, here's what I'm going to try to do with it, and we'll see how it comes out. Um, I got me some of these containers right here, right? I got some of these coming. So they'll be here for next week. Um, right here, these plastic containers. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a raw chicken breast in there. And uh, I'm going to put some rice in the bottom of it. And throw some uh, water on it. And stick it in there at lunchtime. And at dinner time, I'm going to pull it out, right? Uh, that's what we're going to do. They also sell this, if you don't have an inverter in your truck, they'll sell this with an inverter. And it doesn't, it's not that big of an inverter. I mean, I think a 100-watt inverter can run it. It's not that much. Um, let me see if it tells us the, the wattage. I know it's not that much because the inverter that they sell with it, if you go to their website, hotlogicmedia.com, and they're a Michigan company, right? They're over in Grand Haven, Michigan. Um, let me see if it's got in here. Well, I'll look at the back of this. When in doubt, look in the back. Dude, I need... I might put my glasses on for this. Hey, hey, Shadow Wolf, don't be watching. Shows the age. All right, we'll put these on. It's kind of like um, 45 watts. 45 watts, folks. You know, a little small plug in your cigarette lighter inverter will run it. Because, you know, they also sell the cigarette lighter version, right? So it's 45 watts. Yeah, yeah, Shadow. If you put glass Pyrex in it, easy to clean, right? Just rinse it out with some water. Um, these plastic storage containers uh, that you can put in it, they, uh, they're they washable. So if you bought seven of them, you'd have a whole week's of food there or use any dish you really want, right? That's why I'm going to try it out because that's really... That's really cool, and I had a lot of good reviews from people. Um, well, it should work on a 1500 watt. It's only 45 watts. 45 watts is nothing, right? I mean, computers are more than 45 watts. Laptops are 80 watts, right? So this this uses less electricity than a, than a laptop computer. Um, so there you go. And then we're going to order the big one. I'm going to try the small one out. Like Shadow Wolf says, you know, the big one's better, right? Um, so I got the small one, and uh, I'm going to order the big one. And they're, you know, they're 
little bags, right? So that you can fold them down or whatever. But uh, that way, if I got some stuff in the big one and I want to do some more stuff in the small one, no big deal, right? I'm going to make homemade uh, bean and ham soup in it, so watch for that. Uh, so we're going to do another cooking series, but we're going to do it with this this item here. I know Snorlord uses um, one of those stove deals, uh, but with this, you know, you can put cardboard in there. So uh, other Trucker Jane's best, right? Just throw your whole pot pie in there. Don't even take it out of the box. Just throw it in there. Um. Ah. <laughs> Well, Snorlord, if you want, anybody wants to buy it, the discount code's in the description. It's just BRRN, right? They give you 20% off your order. And that's even if they're on sale. They still give you another 20% off if you use that code. So, you know, it's a good deal. Um, so that's what we're doing there. I've been uh, really busy. So, you know, we haven't done a lot of videos. Uh, we're going to do some more videos. Um... I've been trying to help out a lot of guys in the um, downward cycle, as you might want to call it. Freight rates are low. They're coming back up. Uh, other trucker, James Best, he, he sat there and did a video the other day and showed that his, uh, you know, his regional operation, the, the numbers are going up. Um, Russ Maynard has one. He just chimed in. He has one. Uh, well, if you ever want to buy another one, Russ... So you can get 20% off, brother. But uh, I talked to a few, you know, a few drivers over the last week and trying to help them out in developing a new route that they can drive, right? Uh, new freight lanes. And we went over cost per day because they were stuck on the cost per mile and they were only hauling loads that were X amount of dollars per mile, right? Um, the problem with that is is that they were sitting for one, two, or three days. Well, when you do that, guess what? Guess what? Just doesn't work, folks. You don't get to go home because you didn't make money. You got to stay out there and work. Um, so the cost per day is what you really need to do because that way, if the load's low, you know what they call cheap freight, some people call cheap freight, um, there's really no cheap freight in the industry. It just depends on, you know, what, what people haul it for, right? Because it's competition. Um, you know, if you go all the way back to 1980, uh, to the Mortar Carrier Act of 1980, with President Carter signed in, right? Um, that was deregulation of trucking. Um, that made it competition. That's why we have what we have today. Right. That's why you've seen a huge amount of uh, trucking companies open up. You've seen broker after broker after broker. So you, you get all these brokers involved now, um, and they just keep adding on and adding on. And the problem is, is you got brokers that sit at home and do the job, and they have no expense really because they're doing it out of their home, right? Uh, so. They have less overhead than some of these big brokers. They have all the buildings and all the employees, you know, their agents. And that's why it's, uh, you know, lowest bidder wins, right? Pretty much. That's, that's the problem, right? There's the problem. Um, there's not a set rate, a minimum set rate, right? It's competition. Uh, some guys will haul lower. And then here you got these guys that make these stupid comments. Uh, you see them all over Facebook and everywhere, right? They make these stupid comments, right? And they say, well, I'm not hauling for anything less than 250 a mile. I just park my truck and I sit home for two months, three months, four months. Yeah, right. Sure they do. Sure they do, folks. Come on. You know what I mean? And if they do, they ain't changing nothing. Because it doesn't matter how many people sit at home, it's not going to change anything because you can't get everybody to sit at home. Because people want to feed their families, people work. You can't get, everybody knows, everybody on here, you cannot get 
five truck drivers in a room and agree on an, on one thing without an argument, let alone thousands of them, millions of them, right? So it's not going to work. So what you've got to do is you have to maneuver the way you your freight lanes to the industry at that time, right? That's what you got to do. Um, you know, Shadow Wolf, it says, uh, I was offered a job local there, truck 25 per hour. Said, no way, I'm over the road. Right, that's what, you know, it's what you like to do. Uh, then he's going to be over the road in an RV, right? He's going to have some RV adventures going on there. Marcos, what did you get? Did you get a lemon? Your truck's breaking down a lot. I'm 30k more to pay off. Is it uh, warranty? Is it still under warranty, or is it breaking down without warranty? It's breaking down a lot without warranty. That's not good. That's not good, man. Uh, yes, James G. He sat home all of January. He says, "Look, let's stop this. I'm gonna sit home all of January. He sat home all of January. No one joined him." No one came over for the barbecue. No one came over to do any snowmobiling with them. You know? Then he says, hey, I got to get back to work. There's nobody joining. Um, what's yes? Still has a warranty? Still has a warranty. Um, oh, no warranty. That's where you got to draw the line, Marco. You got to look at what it's costing you. If it's breaking down a lot, is it, you know, getting into that status where it's just, no matter what you do to it, it's going to keep breaking? Some people say, well, if you fix it, it won't break again. That's not true either. Um, depends on what, what it is, right? So that's where you got to make the decision. Do I go get another used truck? Do I get a used truck with a warranty? Or do I go new? I don't know about new right now with you know, the rates the way they are, the industry the way it is. Um, if you can get a nice used one, fairly used, uh, with a good warranty, uh, that would be a way to do it until the stuff picks back up. And then you could always trade that in and, and get a new truck if you want a new truck. But I wouldn't buy a used truck without a warranty. Just wouldn't do it. Uh, you got too much risk, too much business risk. Um, and I don't care what anybody says. Uh, if you, you know, you got these guys, oh, go pay cash for a used truck, man. You know, then you ain't got to worry about nothing. Sure you do. Breakdowns. Uh, if, if you put all that cash down, you know, you better have a whole lot more cash in the bank because they're mechanical pieces of equipment, folks. You could take a truck right off the line, brand new, and it could break down on you. Um, when they're used and got 700,000 plus miles on them, they can break down any, any second of the day, Right. Losing oil pressure. That's not good either. Uh, what'd they say it was? Did you have it diagnosed? Uh, losing oil pressure doesn't mean that the engine is really going bad. It could be several things causing the oil pressure. Um, you know, your oil pump could be uh, getting old. You might need a new oil pump. Uh, you know, things like that. Uh, So what you got to do, Marco, is you got to sit down, uh, put down how much it's cost you over, over the month, see how much, you know, you know, plus what you owe on it, what the monthly payment is, and see if it equals, you know, let's say if you're going to buy a new truck. See if it equals that new truck payment, and then you got to figure out, you know, what your miles per gallon is, what you're going to get with a new truck if you went that route. And if you're over-the-road driver, like Shadow Wolf is, and you say how many miles you're going to do, divide that by the difference in fuel mileage, and uh, see how much money you would save. Take that off of the monthly payment, right? Because you're saving that money. And then you would, you know, be able to make your decision. Um, right, Russ Maynard. Yeah, if anybody's seen, you know, Little Guy's channel way back when he had that brand new Volvo, it broke down, what, two or three times within the first 15,000 miles? Um, and that's just the thing, right? You could take two trucks, just like they were off the same line, right after each other one truck runs fine no problems the other truck has problems uh, 
so it's just it's a roll of the dice no matter if you buy new or not the only difference is you have a warranty but if you're in the shop too many times you know that could also put you down right um, let's see what else we got here snow lord says most most of the drivers i knew at landstar that wouldn't move on certain rpms are now out of business that's right snow lord they are out of business um you know and that's the thing they, they get put out um and i you know i, I was talking uh, a while ago with a, a gentleman that you know he's got uh, a slight problem and uh, we're gonna we're gonna try to fix it right we're gonna fix it so I'll be talking to him next week and uh, we're gonna come up with a game plan and we're gonna fix it kind of like when me and you uh, snow lord met up right we we talked and everything and we came up with a game plan um, you know we fix it Um, I can open them up. I can open up the carrier packets, Big Rig Bill, in my um, Apple phone, uh, and just click on a little pin and add text to all the documents right from the email they send me. And then when I'm all done filling it out, I just hit done and then hit reply all, and it sends it right back to them. Everything filled out. Um, if you have an Android phone, I'm not sure how Android works uh, because it's Everybody's going to make programs for it, right? Uh, that feature is built into the iPhone. Um, Android, you got to do, I think Snorter will tell you, I think you got to do a Adobe fill in sign or something like that, one of those apps. And then you can open it up. Is that right, Snowlord? You can open up the PDF file with an Adobe fill in sign, then fill in all the blanks and sign it. Is that, I think that's what he uses. Um, over Texas, Minnesota, is average eight miles per gallon. Through the mountains with the 860. They must have went west. They must have went west. Uh, well, I use, uh, well, in trucking office, you don't have to, Big Rig Bill, you don't have to do the um, Thunder Funding Invoice templates if you're using trucking office. It'll do the, it'll manufacture the template itself, right? It'll produce it itself uh, when you hit Create Invoice. All you got to do is go into your settings, your profile, click um, Edit Options, and uh, Russ Maynard can tell you. I think he uses it also. And then down at the um, box on the Invoice section, you just put, you just put in that bottom on the template they send you. There's that wording, right? You just put all that in into that block and save it. Um, So you can do that. Uh, what's up, Don? What's going on? So you can do that. And that's how you do the invoices there. And then it's it's saved in there. And then when you hit create invoice, it does it automatically, right? You pick Thunder Funding uh, to create the invoice to remit to. And then it has all that in there for you. And it puts in the shipper receiver, all that good stuff, the money. Um, it pre-populates it for you on every load. Uh, still waiting on detention from Monday delivery. Uh, was that an Uber load? Dave, was that an Uber load? Uber can take one to ten business days to get you the um, rate comp. Uh, you can Okay, you can do this. I mean, if, if you need the money, if you've been out of work a long time and need the money, um, you could submit it. And then when you get the detention, right, the new rate con, then you do a resubmit, right? So what will happen there is, depending on the broker and how honest they are, right, uh, if they get the original and they sent the check out already and then they get a resubmit, then usually... They'll send the check for the other part, right? For the other part. Um, you know, that's how that'll work. 
um, chr call up Gerald right and tell him hey we still haven't got this and you know he should be able to get that to you right call him up call him and say hey we you know what's the status on this uh, detention and can we get the rate con please and uh, he should get it to you pretty quick all right I'm gonna keep this video short uh, I gotta go check on and the boss up there, um, see if she needs any help. And uh, we got to get ready to go to uh, physical therapy here pretty soon. So I can't stay on here that long. If you get time, could you call me? Reference working. Uh, up a quote for direct shipper that wants to use me twice a week. Uh, Bill, if I can get some time today, I'll call you later today. Okay, I'm gonna see it. I'll see if I can get some time to break out and uh, give you a call for a few minutes. If that works, probably maybe this afternoon, I can give you a shout, um, or this evening, right? How many hours detention? Uh, just put up on the screen how many hours you're there, because you got to give them two hours, right? That's usually the average. So, how many hours of detention? Subtract two hours and, and then let me know, was it four, three, five? Thanks, Don, I appreciate it. So what? Simplify, Rick, thanks, appreciate it. Thanks for your service. Um, Thanks, Light Bright. Okay, so I'm not going to wait over text. You know, you, you got to type. Now, come on, man. Type it, type it. There's two of you in the truck. You should be able to type it. Uh, how many hours detention are you talking? Right? If you're there eight hours, then you get six, right? You just subtract two. Um, I'm not worried about it, Big Rig Bill. Twenty-four plus. So you're looking at you're looking at a um, you're looking at layover pay, right? Like three hundred bucks or something, right? Two three hundred bucks, whatever they're going to agree on. Uh, I would wait, right? Because you're getting paid on these loads, right? Every day or whatever after you turn them in. If you could wait, I'd wait. Um, that might take a while to get that approved through their customer right um, if you can't wait then do what I you know just do what I said just just send it in and then when you do get it just rebill it and then cross your fingers that you get the money right um, that's a big brokerage right they should pay it uh, if it was a smaller broker then I would think twice about you know sending it in and then rebilling it but with those guys they're, they're one of the biggest in the country right so They'd probably just, I think I've done that once with them. Uh, I think James G. sent one in later. And they paid in two different checks, right? Because I had to rebill it uh, like a week later. So, you know, you could do that also. And you should be all right. All right. We're ending it here. Everybody have a, a great day. And uh, like I said, if you want to try out that cooker, you get that 20% off, just put that code in. Um, and then the more people that, that orders, maybe they'll give us a bigger discount code later on. Who knows? Um, yeah, he's yeah. they got to wait on the consignee, you know, to verify everything and go through all their channels, which, you know, it's all done by email. No one calls on the phone anymore. That's the problem. No phone calls, right? So... All right, I got to get back to work, and then I got to get ready uh, to uh, do the other stuff. So we'll see you all later. Thanks for watching, and uh, everybody, a lot of people on here is already using the Hot Logic Mini, right? Uh, Shadow Wolf is. He got the big one because you know, he cooks the big smorgasbords in there, right? He gets his coffee going, has that big breakfast. 
He's probably got omelets in there, potatoes, biscuits and gravy, uh, all kind of stuff, right? Logic Neil, what's going on down there in the Motor City? All right, so we'll see y'all later.